Welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. Today we're going to be taking a look at a simple method for purifying polluted water into clean water through the production of steam very, very easily using a space heater. However, getting to this point was quite a journey, so let me explain. I started off this episode inspired by a comment you guys left me on the previous video. Now this idea here was in a direct response to a comment that Jew and Castrolock left. I really enjoy your experiments entertaining as hell. User Kasha here posted a few experiments on the forums about how the gas slash tile interface transfers heat. This in turn got me thinking about thermoregulators and putting those inside of a single chamber so that all of the hot gases was at the top and the cold gas is at the bottom. Now looking at Kasha's experiment here, there's a hot area and cold area, and I will have links to this down there in the description below, but more or less we're using the thermal overview right here just to kind of get an idea of how that heat energy is transferring between the hot areas and the cold areas. And as we can see right here, obviously if you have a cold area on top and then the hot area below, those want to kind of even out so there's actually you know a lot of stuff transferring going on here however if you have hot on top and cold on the bottom the two areas really kind of want to stay apart from each other they don't mix that much now while i did make a fair bit of progress looking into this problem and solving the different nuances that it has I ended up stumbling across a much easier method to produce steam. And by any means, I'm not claiming that this is a unique idea. There's thousands and thousands of people that play this game, and I'm sure people have explored this method before. However, looking through the forums and reading through Reddit and all of your guys' comments, nothing has directed me to look at the space heater in such a way that it could potentially be a steam generator. So here's my reaction as I discover this for the very first time, all on my own. You know, maybe the space heater would work, See, its max temperature has already been reached because of the gas that's around it. What happens if you pump a really cold gas that has terrible thermal conductivity next to it, though? Can that space heater stay nice and hot and then convert that, you know, so it doesn't affect the liquid? That's actually a, an idea. Something that's horribly thermally conductive. I know that what that is, that's chlorine. Chlorine sucks. Look at that. 0 0.008 thermal conductivity. And what if you run a space heater in a vacuum with just liquid? That might work. Dirty water. I want one kilogram of it. Chlorine. Guess what I want of that? One kilogram. And what did I get? I got polluted ice. Okay, so the two reached the same temperature at the same time. So, if I do this number, I change one of these to a vent, and the other side I put a pump, or what if I just have thermal conductivity between two zones? Just throw some granite in there, and then disable this, right? So the What do I got? I got steam and water. Ha! What? Boom! 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 There it is! That is how we make steam easy. Ah oh, ha ha! Woo! Look at this! It's just making it over and over again. Bingo! I got it! Would you look at this? Look at it. The chlorine? Is it, is it, it's not even going up in temperature. Chlorine, for one, it, it's finally useful. I'll take it back, chlorine, you don't completely suck, but look at this, 0 0.0081 is actually becoming useful because its thermal conductivity is so terrible. You can't like change its temperature. So therefore you can heat it like crazy. Look, I'm ending up with steam. I'm ending up with clean water. I love it. 
All right, so let me explain the details of what's going on with this space heater. So the space heater is made out of gold amalgam. So it doesn't have a very high thermal conductivity. So it will heat up, but while it's heating up, it's transferring some of that heat into whatever is around it. So that we happen to have a little bit of liquid here, and we also have gas. Now, these space heaters will stop heating up if the gas that's around them in any of these tiles reaches 70 degrees Celsius. So the gas that we have in this area is chlorine, and this chlorine is here because it's thermal conductivity is very very low so what happens is that this space heater can actually heat up faster than it can heat the gas including the polluted water so it can heat all of that up faster than it can heat the chlorine now this happens because we're actually cooling the chlorine because the chlorine is within contact of a tile of some sort that has thermal conductivity so there's some transfer of energy between this tile and just the gas so therefore its temperature stays down below 70 degrees celsius while the space heater's temperature goes well up above 120 degrees celsius at that point polluted water turns into steam therefore there is a gas that is above 70 degrees Celsius and the space heater turns off so that it doesn't damage itself by overheating once that steam condenses back down into water there's no longer that hot gas there and the space heater resumes operation so my idea for this experiment is a, a larger scale of what we have down here right so we have thermally conductive tiles that are near the gas and or in contact with the gas and then everything else is the insulated tiles so that's where the heaters are going to sit on top of so the plan is something like this right above the space heaters i'm going to have gas permeable tiles made of gold amalgam so the idea is that once this does turn to steam it's going to rise up but then it will condense um, because it's going to be cooled on top of that I'm going to have the mesh tiles that way I can maintain thermal conductivity between the cold stuff up here which is going to be sealed off uh, and the other stuff but this has to be made of gold amalgam because that's what's available steel is another option once we get steel and that's available but for right now it's just going to be gold amalgam on top of that I'm going to place granite so there we have it, a bunch of chlorine gas in here. So as this stuff turns into steam, I'm hoping it'll turn back into water up here in the mesh tile. Otherwise, it'll just keep circulating back and forth and until it does find its way up there. But I'm thinking once I get a little bit of water up there, it'll want to kind of adhere to that water already. And then it'll flow out to the right and collect in a little bit of a space where I can count it. Okay, so I'm going to start this off with just a layer of 100 grams of water right here. So not a lot. Just a little bit, and let's see what happens here. Thermally, hopefully I'm getting a, a nice bit of conductivity between this tile, down to the mesh tile, down to the permeable tile. And what we can see down here on the bottom is that the space heater is warming up quite a bit, and now we're getting some liquid. Look at this, so the liquid's very close to that. We should get steam very soon here. There we go. A little bit of steam is now forming. And now I've got water at the top. Look at that, sweet. So this is actually working. Okay, so from this little experiment here, I can see that the chlorine is still struggling to stay cold enough. So I'm, I'm going to want to cool that stuff down actively. Okay, so now I have a thermal regulator loop running. You can see that I have a lot of hydrogen moving around. It's nice and cold, but it's really not running all that steady. Okay, so some of these aren't running because it has low air pressure. And that's interesting. So here's what's happening. I have polluted water down here, and then I have a very small amount of clean water that's settled on top of this. So that's why these space heaters are turning off, even though it looks like they should be running. At this point, I tried many different things as far as trying different materials and different arrangements, mesh bottoms, all that sort of different things. Uh, I tried to get this system working just right, but at the end of the day, it wasn't really working all that well. I could get steam, but I couldn't necessarily condense it correctly to get it out of the system. So I ditched to that method and tried to go down the path of gas pumps and thermoregulators. Okay, so this arrangement here is seems to be working out, actually. So what I got is a bunch of pumps that are sucking up gas here. It's running through a couple of gas valves to reduce it down. That is then running through a filter, and I'm filtering out steam to the right. So you can see the water I'm getting over here. You know, I got 20-some kilograms over here, so about 50 kilograms, I guess, in that cycle alone. 
Everything else is running through a thermal regulator being dropped by a certain amount of temperature and then being reintroduced. Wow, I added a little bit of hydrogen to this chamber and that made a huge difference. Now I'm getting tons of water out of this. So a little bit of hydrogen in the same area now adds a lot of thermal conductivity and thermal capacity that I'm transferring through these thermal regulators into this area here. So I think that made a giant difference in just how much these space heaters can run. So a mixture of the two gases seem to have made a big difference. Now, even though this is probably nowhere near the most efficient way to kind of run this, uh, run a system with this gas filter and these thermal regulators and all of these pumps, there's probably a much better way to do this. It might give me some idea of just how much water can be processed by some of these space heaters. And that's really what I want to do. I want to try to measure that a little bit. All right, so I did a little math on this system over here on the right and it's processing about 12 kilograms of water a day, which is not a lot, <laughs> not even close really. And it comes in these weird bursts. So all of a sudden you get a bunch of it, right? So it does work. You'll see that that was 101 before and now it jumped up to about 123 kilograms. I don't know, there's stuff going on over here. So it is working, and it's working better than anything I've tested thus far, except for the liquid tepidizer method. So here's where I'm at with this system. I did scale this up, and I did get larger results, at least I believe I did. Although right now it's taking a, quite a bit of equipment because I'm experimenting with some different methods, and it's, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a hard thing to solve currently because I've gone large scale, but that's brought its own difficulties. Still, though, uh, compared to all the other methods I've tested thus far, except for the liquid tepidizer, which is, you know, probably going to be patched at some point here, it's, you know, still the best method I have. The thing is, I want to solve it on a more small scale, so that's what I'm doing over here. So, I just have one little space heater. I'm not going to worry about cooling it with, you know, external equipment. It's just going to run next to these tiles, and these granite tiles will cool down the gas as need be. And as steam forms, hopefully it'll condense over on this side and then the liquid pump will pick it up if it's water, I'll store it. If it's still polluted water, I'll drop it back in here, even though it shouldn't happen. And then I'm gonna use a hydro switch to meter the water that's coming into this cell. So very simple, little small unit. We'll see how that works. All right, so let's see what happens over here. The temperature is going up. Chlorine is staying quite stable, which is good. I may or may not have to switch this to gas permeable tiles in order to get the steam out. But we'll see. Hopefully water will build up and kind of trickle out. That's what I'm hoping for. Although I may not even want this tile here. Yeah, let me get rid of that tile. I don't like that tile. Not a big fan of that one either. So now the heat that should be coming off of this should mostly just be radiating off of this tile. Maybe put this in a cold biome, get a bunch of stuff to melt. I don't know. We can put wheeze warts around it, all sorts of things. Okay, so here's an interesting idea. What if I just use, I already got all this liquid around here. I was gonna say use some wolframite pipes to kind of, you know, transfer a little bit of heat. You know, there we go. Just a little bit of a heat sink between these two areas. Let's see what that does. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There we go. Boom! All sorts of steam happening now. And right there is like a bunch of kilograms. So now I'm getting more liquid that's coming in. So that's good. Okay, so I'm going to give this a few more cycles and then I'll start measuring it just to get an average of how much water this little device over here is converting. And I will be bringing it in at the maximum temperature of this liquid tepidizer. So... That should be about 85 degrees Celsius for the polluted water. I can set this down to 8.1. That's as low as I can get it. Out here we can see that the polluted oxygen is 44 degrees Celsius. It's quite warm out. So, you know, wherever this is placed, it looks like it's working all right. Tiles seem to have settled around 50 degrees Celsius. It's not a cold thing, but it's still working. Okay, so it seems like I've reached a good balance point for this system right now. It's bringing in more 
polluted water every once in a while. It's starting to heat it up. It's starting to move from one side to the next. This liquid valve is set as low as it can go, so it doesn't really disrupt the temperature of the polluted water that much. I think I'm in a good shape here to do a, an experiment here. All right, so I made it through 25 cycles, and this little setup here continued to run very, very steadily throughout all of those cycles, and it seemed to be very, very stable. At no point did this thing start to overheat, or, you know, did the gas, the chlorine get too hot inside of here. Everything just seemed to work and work really well. So here are the results for this little setup. This thing can purify from polluted water into clean water 7 kilograms a day or 11.7 grams a second. And this space heater runs at 120 watts and that actually puts out 90 watts of heat energy. Now in this test I'm not set up to count just how many watts this thing is actually using because there's a ton of other equipment that's running right now to power everything. Although I will say that this liquid pump and this liquid filter and the other pump that runs inside of here is not running very much at all. I mean, maybe for like one second to really move, you know, seven kilograms a day. That's barely a pump cycle, so it's not much at all. So while these numbers are not very big, this isn't a very big test. There are other pieces of equipment that we can kind of stack in here next to this space heater to potentially increase the amount of steam generation we have in a day. As a proof of concept, it's nice to see that this is a very nice stable way to generate steam from polluted water and then get clean water out of it. And based on what I've seen from these results here, we don't need this liquid filter at all, so we can just actually get rid of that. I tell you what guys, this was one ridiculous episode to record. Uh, started with thermoregulators, tried to build a more refined thermoregulator system, that didn't really work out. Ended up finding this little thing with space heaters and uh, you know tried to exploit that a little bit with a bigger, more complicated system and then I tried to take that over here to another big complicated system. But what is the main takeaway for something like this? Start small, start simple, and then scale up from there. I, this is where I should have started, but I wasn't, and it's cost me several hours. So there we have it, a small but simple method to purify polluted water into clean water. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found this video somewhat informative or helpful, let me know down there in the comment section below. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and thank you guys for all of your support lately. It's been absolutely awesome. If you have more inspiration, other ways you can think of to scale this system up here and also to tie it back into the natural gas generator, that's absolutely awesome. Go ahead and leave that down there in the comment section below because that's really what I want to do here is I want to find a way to take that natural gas generator and make it one clean running system. And to do that, I need to make steam and I need to make steam effectively so it'll be interesting to see where i go from here thank you guys for watching have a great day if i've earned your subscription then thank you so much for that stay awesome guys peace brothgar out